Right, I want you to open the box carefully because I want to be able to use it again next year. <gasps> Chocolate. I get it. Wow. Dorothy, would there be a, a nice way of reacting rather than I've got it? What could you say instead? Thank you. Oh, are you excited? Mm -hmm. It's a Christmas chocolate. Can I eat it now? Sure. Every day may not be good, oh. but there is something good in every day. Mm. What do you think that means? Mm. So even though you have bad stuff happen during the day, like you get into trouble or you make a mistake or something makes you sad. It's you. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's always something good that happens as well. And sometimes that's love, and sometimes it's chocolate, mm -hmm. sometimes it's someone doing a fart and making you laugh. <laughs> Quite yeah. often, and daddy. Sometimes it's someone doing, doing a burp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and someone has a cake splattered in their face. <laughs> Okay. Sure. And the camera that does try to exploded. <laughs> Don't want exploded cameras, thank you. What are we doing, Daddy? We're going to magic them to school. So I don't have to go out in the cold. So you don't have to go out in the cold. Awesome. Yeah, He's working from home today, so he could take them. I've got to go upstairs and poor excuse, isn't it? Work. Three. Three, two, two one. one. <laughs> Wait. Maybe it's because there's two of us. Maybe do it um, down from two. Down. Oh, okay. So two, one. Yeah. Okay. There's two of us. Two, one. Oh, I thought that was one. I think we'll just do it with a rude word. So we'll go three, two, one, and you have to shout stinky poo bums. Okay. okay. All right. Last time we'll try it. Three, two. Wait. Three, two, one. Snapping fingers didn't work. They did not magically appear at school. I had to come out in the cold and bring them to school, but I did cheat and came in the car because my excuse was we had lots of cakes to donate to the cake sale. So we had to drive. Oh. So here's a slightly random <clears throat> thought process and one that I am giving to you from my car. I have actually arrived back home. But if I go inside, then I have to find the one angle in the house where you can't see the horrendous mess that the house is in. If even, in fact, that angle does exist. So it's much easier for me to sit here. And I don't have to worry about it. I was having a conversation with Felicity yesterday. And um, we were chatting away about something that somebody that she knows their their parents do this thing and i you know just a, a way that they operate in their house nothing specific about it and i'm certainly not going to divulge um completely innocent but it really struck me how different we were how how differently we operate as families now clearly my way is right <laughs> Let's just lay that baseline now. Um, but do you know what? The flippancy aside, I heard many moons ago the most relevant uh, piece of advice I've heard, and I've never forgotten it, that as parents, we are not raising children. We are raising adults. Which might seem a weird thing to say when you look at your four-year-old or your six-year-old. But it's true, they will be adults. We are adults for the biggest proportion of our lives. And if we do not teach our children how to deal with situations, how to deal with mistakes, how to deal with problems and issues, how to resolve as many of those things themselves, if we don't teach them that they have the resources and the confidence and the ability and the skill to do all of those things, to make those corrections. Even just simply to come and say, I can't do this, I need help. That in itself is a, is a, a skill. 
I know plenty of people that won't ask for help. Um, that's our job. We should be doing that. Every time we take a decision out of the hands of our children, be they four or eight or 12 or 16, whatever age they are, every time we take that choice away from them, we are making their future harder. We are making their adulthood more difficult. And yet what we want for our children is a smooth ride, don't we? Isn't that what we want? We want them to just go through life, no heartache, no pain. Nice, just nice easy life, thank you very much. That's what we yearn for, really, and health, obviously. Those are the things we really want for our children, I think. So we do it now. Explain to them the risks, give them the choice, but more importantly, be there to help pick it up and put it back together again. Because every time you do that, every time they do that, their life, their future, their adulthood becomes easier, smoother, happier, because you're giving them a skill. Every time you protect them, or you do something that you, you feel is protecting them, you're actually taking something away from them. You are taking away a piece of their coping mechanism. And I feel really strongly about this. So there you go. I have no idea why this just came into my head. It's the weird things we think about when we're driving. Um, but um, I thought I'd share it with you because I've been gone for a while and I'm sure you missed my ranting. Why do you think am I mushing up digestive biscuits? Am I making a cheesecake, do you ask? No. Am I just amusing myself? Probably there is method to my madness or will be revealed tomorrow. Mm, that's quite pretty. I'm gonna say goodnight. It's not that late, it's quarter past seven, but uh, I'm done. I'm done for the day. I've done quite well, done lots. Quite pleased. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Really looking forward to it. See you soon.